good morning. Just sitting here. It is the summer solstice today, so uh, that'll be kind of cool tonight. June 21st. We are in Bettles Bay. We've actually been here two nights and now and not even got the tender down. It rained over an inch yesterday and it's raining still this morning. So it might have been a fun place to explore, but neither of us were that interested in exploring in the rain, apparently. So we just worked on some boat projects. Let me show you the anchorage on the chart and our plan for today and how uh, we think it's pretty important to remain flexible due to the weather. This is our anchorage here in Bettles Bay. Bettles Inlet? I think Lagoon actually it's called. Here's a blow up. As you can see there's no depths in here. But we knew from the guidebook that right in this area would be shallow and we needed to come in at a higher tide. And we came in at a plus 10 tide and had six feet of water under the boat. So that means at a four foot tide we'd be scraping the bottom to get in. We are in like 40 feet of water here on the, in, inside, but across here, it's uh, quite shallow. So right now we've got a 5.76 tide. So in theory, if we left right now, there'd be a foot and a half under the water, but we're gonna wait. And uh, about another hour and or so, and there'll be a couple more feet and we'll carefully slide our way out. Valdez is way up here, Cordova way up here. We did uh, one stop over here. We haven't visited any of this. And then this is Night Island. And our original plan was to spend this coming week here in the Night Island area. And Blake wants to check the chart out as well. But we're not going to. Instead today, we're gonna cross the sound from the Western Sound to the Eastern Sound and spend our week over here and not around the Night Island area which I said was our original plan. Let me show you the forecasted weather and why we're making that change today. So here's our predict wind on the iPad. Uh, starting this is today at noon. This little tiny white dot over here, that's Sea Venture. That's where we are right now. And this is all of Prince William Sound. As I said, here's where we thought we would spend the week around Night Island. Instead, we're going to cross over here. And let me play this and I'll show you why. So today, the weather is quite calm, it looks like. And tomorrow, it starts getting a little windy. If we pause it momentarily, the wind in here is 15, 16 knots. We let it keep building here. Let's pause it there for a moment. We're a Wednesday evening, 35 knots here. Where we're talking about going is up over here, about 10 knots less. This is this beautiful Bettles Lagoon and we are working on getting ourselves extricated from here. So this is the entrance we need to go through and uh, it doesn't show very well, let me see, there we go. But it does get pretty darn shallow on the way out, or 26, but I think we're gonna see the single digits. So let's see here. What we do know is that we made it in just fine and we're only a foot lower in tide, is that right? Yeah, about a foot lower than it was when we came in. So as long as we follow our course, we should be fine on the way out. So Jim has, we have the course up over on this computer. Look at that, right on the line. We know we were good coming in, so we just followed the exact same track going out. I'm yep. trying to be too creative here. We should be coming up on the shallow here pretty quick. Remember, the depth sounder reading is the depth under our hull, so it's offset. So the actual water depth is six foot three inches more than shows on the depth sounder, because that's how much water we draw. Here he is in his usual spot as we depart in Anchorage. Right, Barkley?
Look at all that water. Lots of water. So with six feet under the hull, we have about 12, 13 feet. Total water depth. Yeah. Right. Coming in and not knowing what you're going to encounter is a little more uh, uh, hand wringing, okay? Because uh -huh. <laughs> you just don't know if it's going to get more and more shallow or if it's going to deepen out again. And so that was... Uh, that was the fun we had coming in. And as I pointed out earlier here, we're, we're dealing with a lagoon here that has no charted depth on the charts. Nothing. We're on our way. We've exited the lagoon. We have the navigation steering on. So we're back to the relax and monitor mode. Except we're still throttling up some more. I've been asked, right now we're running at about uh, 1,250 RPMs. If we warm the engines up uh, before we uh, leave the dock or an anchorage, and the answer to that question is no, for a couple of reasons. You can see that they're only at about 160 degrees now, and operating temperature is like 180. So um, there's really no reason to. I have complete confidence they're not going to die or anything. And uh, Ford Lehman's uh, don't warm up. Uh, they will never get to operating temperature in uh, idle, almost regardless of the RPMs that you apply. They need a load on them to get up to temperature anyway. So we could sit at the anchorage waiting for a long time for the engines to get up close to operating temperature. It's just not going to happen until you're going. So we pretty much fire up, and then while we're doing the anchor or untying lines, they... You know, as long as they're over 100 degrees, we're fine. And off we go. We've just exited the bay and looking back at the glacier over here. The incredible view out the front as we continue our cruise this afternoon with a complete change of plans. Remember earlier we were going to cross the sound because of that strong east wind? Yeah, now we're not. We are going to, uh, well, that's too big of a scale, uh, stay on the east side of Prince William Sound based on um, our local friends, Eric and Jan, who said that we would maybe get a lot of wind on the west side coming off the mountains that could be pretty bad and we're better off to stay back there on the east side. So, hey, they know what they're talking about. Not like we've ever been here. So we're taking their advice. We're staying on this side and going back by the Nelly Wan Glacier to anchor this evening. The view out the window as we head toward our anchorage and where Blake wants to lay. This is the most comfortable spot we could find to sleep. Apparently. Rosie likes to hide treats in the sizal rope for Barkley to explore and find. There must be an opening. Look at all the boats. The anchorage is where the arrow is. It's very small. Room for one boat, but absolutely incredible. We decided to head up to the Nelly Wan Glacier late in the evening. This is a glacier not often visited because you can't get to it with a cruising boat. In fact, you can't even get a view of it from a cruising boat. You have to enter a very shallow bar-like area in your tender and go about four miles up a large waterway that does a couple of sharp turns blocking the view but it was worth the tender ride up to check out a glacier 
late at night. As you watch the video, you can see there's some vegetation and then less and less and then no vegetation as we get close to the glacier. Apparently it takes years, if not decades, when the glacier recedes for vegetation and ultimately trees to ever take root. It was just fascinating to see this geological change right in front of your face over the course of just a few miles. We are at the end of the glacier on the chart. So it's receded this much more since the chart was created. There's a waterfall on the right side of the big rock. Yeah. And that cave is pretty cool. Look at the blue ice in that cave. That whole section over there looks pretty unstable on the left side, as in it's all fit much forward where the right side is all kind of tapered back. a little more. Cool. The sun's peeking out over the ice field. On the solstice. Good evening, everyone. Hey. It is the summer solstice. June 21st. It, we are in Prince William Sound at Nellie's Rest by the Nellie One Glacier. Yep. Look behind us. It's midnight. It is <laughs> midnight. It's yes. midnight. <laughs> and we thought, this is too cool. Definitely the land of the midnight sun. Um, we stayed wow. up to film this. <laughs> <laughs> Patiently yep. waited till midnight. So and we could film. So there you have it. Midnight on the summer solstice in Prince William Sound. Yeah. yeah I know at that. 60 degrees north. Yeah. Yeah. 60 degrees north. Pretty incredible. 61 degrees, I think, almost. But pretty incredible. It's completely so, daylight. It really is. Look at this. Completely daylight. It's pretty neat. So at any rate, wanted to share it with you. All right, good night. Good night. And we're off from this anchorage to connect up with some YouTube friends. 
It's my job to take care of getting the anchor secured and the front deck all washed down while Rosie cruises the boat out of each anchorage. The short cruise today from our anchorage up to Shady Cove, almost within view of the anchorage, with a cruise through Deep Bay just to look at the beautiful scenery. trying to uh, stay out of the weather, um, but now we're on the move again. We're going to see if we can get to another anchorage that might be a little more protected as we wait for this blow to blow over, um, but we've actually had a pretty good time all in all. Um, <laughs> what do you have to time. say? Well, we went to the Nelly One Glacier, and then we've met up the last couple nights with one of our uh, people we met through the YouTube channel on their boat, and they rafted to us, and we got the shrimp some, and, and have a great time with them. Yay, he's in there. Yay. Oh, wait, Blake. Yay, there you go. Hi. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is actually videotaping, and this is what we found is the best way to do a photograph because we can, we can basically all the video is life. is thirty pictures a second. Right. Yeah. And you realize can... one selfie of a teenage girl is usually there's forty eight other selfies that wasn't just quite good enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yep. So we all, right. all right. One, two, three. Everybody, do we want to smile? I think that's all. Yeah. 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 Yay. That's it. That's it. Right. An invitation for me to make a funny face. Oh, there you go. Okay, now yeah. we can make funny faces. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Right, for are we that? All right. That's yeah. And now we're moving. It's 20 knots of wind, 23 knots right now over the bow. It's raining. A little light chop. I think the chop is going to increase when we round a corner up here. But oh well, this is, um, yeah, this is this weather. Yeah. It's not the Bahamas. It's not even Puget Sound. So when the weather is good, it's spectacular. But so far, I think in the last, what, 25 days in Prince William Sound, we've had seven or eight of good weather, something like that. And that's that may maybe be usual typical. this year, maybe typical, know. maybe a little less, I don't know. You know it is. It is what it is. It's not easy. Is what I is what I say. Not easy to get here, and then we're deal. You deal with this kind of stuff when you're here. We're anchored and get gust up to 25 knots in the anchorage. So I don't know. When you look outside and it looks like this, I'm a little envious of uh, Brooke and Braden, right, on Mermaid Monster, because I think they're in the Exumas in the Bahamas right now. And sometimes I'm thinking, Prince Wave sounds cool. The Bahamas, not so bad. Right? I don't know. It's 53 degrees out, and it's the end of June. Come on. Weather. Let's go here. Let's, let's find 70 degrees. Somewhere? No? Rosie, did we get 70 degrees anywhere? Somewhere. Somewhere. Not like somewhere it's by it's not. five o'clock somewhere, it's yeah. 70 degrees somewhere. Yeah. It does not get dark though, that is one thing. We went and picked up shrimp pots last night at midnight, uh, yep, with our friends on their boat, and so that is definitely different. Oh well, here we go that way into the fog and rain, but it doesn't look like it's rough out. No, it looks okay. For the next anchorage, we went with Jan and Eric and threaded our way up into Goose Bay. Well, it was time to say goodbye to our new friends Eric and Jan aboard their boat. They operate G'day Charters out of Valdez, and we just had a great time with them. They also met us the first day we arrived in Prince William Sound and provided us a chart that we'd used for all of our planning. 
our trip to Prince William Sound just would not have been the same without their friendship and help. It's just one of the great things about boating is the fantastic, wonderful people you have a chance to meet. Headed off today from one anchorage to another. I think we were at Goose Inlet, a little tiny Goose bay. bay. Goose Bay, a tiny little bay with a narrow entrance was great. Spent the last three days with Eric and Jane aboard their, uh, uh, with, with them on their boat, Seduction. Had a great time for three very stormy, rained over an inch every day, 30 knots of wind in every anchorage. Did some shrimping off their boat since we're not set up for that. Uh, checked shrimp pots at midnight. Sat around chatting till after midnight every night. H had a fabulous time. So they're headed back to uh, Valdez and their home. And we decided to head out, knowing it would be a little lumpy today, but we want to go to Nine Island and start doing some fishing and cruising. So we got a, you know, a two to three foot chop, which was what the forecast was. So we'll have this for a couple hours, um, but that's okay. And uh, about 19 knots of wind there off the port bow. And uh, go do some more exploring. We're heading around this point. Oh, mm -hmm. let's see if I can find my, there. Can I do this? Can there I we go. This? Stop, okay. okay. <laughs> we're moving things around way too much. We're heading around uh, this point right here and we're gonna head down around the island and then tuck into Knight Inlet. And this is Knight Island up here and uh, head off to Dryer Bay at the north end of Knight Inlet or west end, I'm not sure. West end? That way, over here. Here? Yes, so that's where we're headed. So a short little ride, but we're gonna get some open water, relatively open from the sound over here. So we may need to put the fish in the water in a little bit. We'll see. We shall see. That's got, a, the, got a few hours. Look out the window. Getting very used to lumpy. We're getting very used to gray. Gray. Shades of gray and lumpy water. Yeah. Yep. And kind white caps. The story of the week. All right, we're out here and uh, we need to turn to starboard. And so with this water, it's time to put the fish in. So we've simplified it yet again. We're trying something new. And uh, we have eliminated the retrieval line on the fish. So we'll be pulling the fish in with the pole, which will be a whole nother thing. We'll let you know how that goes. But for now, we just need to deploy the fish. And there you go. into this stuff and go beam on to it. The sky is starting to lighten up a little bit. We got behind Eshemi, uh, Crofton Island and we're by Eshemi Bay. And we're gonna uh, take a look at doing some uh, fishing up here. See how we do. In the meantime, I saw a whale here and he was being very cooperative. And so I got my camera and then he wasn't, so. We'll see if we get lucky again when he makes an appearance. We just got here and we're starting to do some fishing. Well, yes, there's going to be a story to tell here. Sea Venture was once again boarded by armed federal agents, but this time not the Coast Guard, which we thoroughly enjoyed. No, this time it was NOAA. And it turns out that the Alaskan State Fish and Game Department do not manage the regulations associated with halibut fishing, but rather that's done at the federal level by NOAA as a result of an international treaty. 
And it turns out there is a specific way you have to clean your halibut. That is, it can only be in four pieces per fish and the skin must be on two from the front, two from the back. Well, Noah's charged with enforcing this regulation and uh, that's what these guys were doing. So, they're the federal fish cleaning police that boarded Sea Venture. And we had not cleaned our halibut correctly. So they spent a long time aboard Sea Venture, going through everything. And at the end, they seized all of our halibut, our 38 pieces that averaged about one and a half pounds. Now, realize you can catch two halibut a day, 11 months a year, but you can only possess four halibut per person or eight halibut. And they cannot be cleaned into more than these four large pieces as long as you're aboard a vessel. Well, we were still aboard the vessel. We'd cut them up into smaller pieces. And so we lost our halibut. When I talked to them about how can we eat halibut at our home, which is Sea Venture, the answer was, we can't. That's correct. Based on these federal regulations of how you must maintain halibut aboard a vessel, regardless of the fact that Sea Venture is our home, we cannot ever eat halibut aboard the boat. Oh well. We're going to keep our YouTube channel fun and talk about the great times we're having cruising, but this was not one of them. And we could get into a long discussion about federal regulations and the money spent doing this type of enforcement, but let's just let it all go and keep our head high and keep on cruising and keep having fun. So that's enough about us being boarded by the fish cleaning police. Let's just get on with cruising. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Cruising Sea Venture up in Prince William Sound. We're getting close. I think maybe one more video of our time in Prince William Sound and we'll begin our transit. The transit videos coming up should be a lot of fun. They'll include Prince William Sound to Southeast Alaska, Southeast Alaska back to Puget Sound and Puget Sound on to San Francisco where Sea Venture currently is located. So until next time, wishing you no wind and flat seas. Thanks so much. And see you next time.